it till the time. Come on. All right. Well, one of the stories is I was out riding. Well, we was riding. We was going to Nashville. And normally, you know, the guys I was riding with, we all had the same kind of motorcycles. You know, you probably get about 150 out of a tank pushing it. So we was riding, and then it was a female. Matter of fact, she hadn't been riding that long. But well, we all stopped, got us some, some breakfast, jumped on the bikes, you know, go. To, I like to meet when I, uh, I go on these bike trips. I like to meet at uh, gas stations or a gas station that has food nearby. That way we ain't got to stop here and go two miles down the road stop here. So you get your gas and then go over there and grab you some breakfast or lunch or whatever time of the day it is. So that's what we normally do. Let's go over here and hit these curves on this gold wing. Oh, yeah, y'all. Uh, and I'm on the double dark side today. You saw that, that F6B will be double dark. But back to the story. So uh, we stopped down there. Everybody got the gas. We daggum rolling. We probably hadn't got a good hour down the road. Next thing you know, one of them get the daggum spit and sputter and hollering and carrying on. What's going on with her bike? Pulls over there. After. I'm like, damn, what's wrong? She said, uh, I think I'm out of gas. How the hell you out of gas when we all got gas at the same daggum time when we all pretty much riding the same bike or got the same uh, fuel capacity? So I had to jump off, you know, jump on the interstate, go down the road. Go. I found a motorcycle shop. Asked them could I borrow the gas tank. They said I could. Put gas in it. Then go back, you know, it just took about two hours to do that whole ordeal. Then, you know, put the gas in there, go back to the gas station, give him the gas can back. And uh, so we took off again, going up the road. She runs out of gas again. What in the world is happening here? That, but that time I just put my foot on her back peg and pushed her while I'm riding my motorcycle. I'm sure you guys have been riding a while know what I'm talking about. That's not the best move. Uh, dangerous, especially if that person don't know how to keep their bike under control, but we made it. And at this time, we getting gas, and I'm just sitting here looking at her through the corner of my eye. You know how you cut your eyes, so I'm sitting there watching to see what she does. Well, she done shoved that daggum gas nozzle down there to the base, down there slammed to the, to the top of that dog on the, the stem, and as soon as the gas hand, the gas nozzle clicks off, she hangs it up. I said, whoa, 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 sugar plum. Hold, hold the phone, hell. She said, what's wrong? I said, put some gas in that cock picking motorcycle. Man, you raise that nozzle up and let that thing fill up damn near till it runs over. Fill that bad boy up, man. You put a whole, almost another gallon and a half in that thing. So she she done that, but that was the culprit. Yeah, she stuck it in there like, like you would do a car, I guess. And when it click off, hang it up. Now, you raise it up there and and dump a little gas in that bad boy and, and let's get on down the road with all this daggum extra stops. And I'm gonna tell you something else. That, that, that kind of uh, burns my biscuits there. I can't stand to see somebody putting gas in the gas tank. And then when they get to it, they start tapping the edge. Tap, 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 tap. Trying to get a drop or two of gas out of the nozzle. I said, man, you, do you realize you tapping metal on metal? And if that thing ever starts a spark, we're going to have a barbecue when your bike is going to be the grill. Well, I, I never thought I'd do my car like that. I said, I, you shouldn't do nothing like that. You know, I know some gas tanks are plastic. I know what you're going to say. Some, you know, I don't, I don't think aluminum will set off a spark. It's just a, just a, just a, the fact that you sitting there tapping metal together and gas them been dripped all over the damn thing. I, I just, it just bothers me. I just don't know. But, yeah, that's one of my gas stop stories, y'all. What, what do you think about that? Put some gas in that daggum thing so we can get on home. Shit. Anybody else had that problem? Shoot, I kind of like my gold wing. It gets about, I get about 220 without my trailer. I'm, I'm right about 200. I'm not giving up a whole lot of fuel. My, it all depends on 
how fast I'm rolling. Now I stay above, you know, I stay above 80. You know, I'm, I'm cruising to 80. If I'm if I'm below 80, it's because I got people in front of me like I am now, and I'm kind of being, con, you know, dictated by uh, dictated to by traffic. But that's fine. I mean, 75, 80, but a good travel speed. If it's if I'm out there by myself and ain't got a lot of cars and and stuff like that, you know, I'm 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 at 80. 80 plus, let's just say that. Michael James, I know you better than that, but hey, you, you lying, Slappy, you do more than 80, 80 plus, you know, but I, I try not to get, get too far over 90, you know, unless I'm out there in, in South Dakota. Now, South Dakota, the speed limit was 80 on a regular day. So, you know, you, the, the speed limit 80, We I, I, I like to try to do 10 over rule of thumb at least 10 over so we running 90 and that reminds me of another story come on all right so here's a story about my buddy Woodrow and and Tawana for that matter but Woodrow and Tawana Bumblebee Bumblebee B, we uh <coughs> we was going to Mount Rushmore and like I said the speed limit was 90 Okay, so, I mean, I'm sorry, the speed limit was 80, and we daggone getting it, boy. I'm like, daggone, boy, look at these cars passing us up. What's going on? I looked up, see that speed limit, 80 miles an hour. I said, oh, snap. Boy, I just daggone squeezed down on it. Got on around 90, about 92, and we just, just sailing. You hear me? I'm looking back. Everybody's riding with me. I'm looking back, and Woodrow's falling behind. Bumblebee's starting to separate from us and all that. And they and they both on Candyman, the 2012s, Candyman Spiders. I'm not sure exactly what hers is, but it's not an RS, but his is an RT. His is an RT. So, uh, I mean, we was rolling. We get down there to the field stop. I said, "What's going on back here? Well, Joe can't keep up." He said, "Man, I got it. It's doing everything it can handle." I said, "No kidding." He said, "Yeah." He, he said, "You you go any faster." I'm tapped out, so I guess they governed at about 90, 92. I'm not sure 95, but that's that, that's all it, it was giving it to them. So we kind of kept it around 90, you know, 87, 90, you know, to, to make sure they could stay stay with us. But um, I was pulling my trailer, you know, I was one up pulling my trailer going to Mount Rushmore, and there was a big old pack of damn Harleys. It was around Sturgis time. We we, we stopped in the Sturgis during the bike rally. And then went on to the roundup when it was in uh, Little Rock. I forget what year that was, but I, I enjoyed Sturgis. But so we came up on this pack of Harleys and got by the back guy and did like that, like you know it's okay to pass. He said yeah. So we passed them up. So I had the cruise control on. You know I'm showing off a little bit now. I had the cruise control on, and I pulled up my trailer and had my legs all kicked out like I was in a lazy boy. And uh, I go by them Harley bars, you know. They had to be doing about 65, 70, because we went by them pretty quick. We went by them and stuff like that, so I had my right hand like this right here, you know. You know, let, let them know, hey, everything good, you know. How y'all doing? Waving at them with my right hand, so they knew that I was on the cruise control. And we went by them and then got up there to a gas stop, and these damn dogs out here acting silly. Got up there by a gas stop, and, uh, that same pack of Harleys pulled up there behind me, and they one of the guys jumped off the bike. He said, man, let me ask you something, buddy. I said, yeah. He said, uh, you mean to tell me you running 85, 90 mile an hour, pulling that trailer, you know, on the cruise control? He said, is that bike that doggone smooth? I said, oh, yeah. He said, man, they're taking everything I can to keep this doggone Harley in the road. They're shaking the shit out of me. I said, oh, it's just that smooth. He said, man, y'all gonna make me mess around and buy me one of them things. I said, well, you can't go wrong. But I understand the, the Harley situation, but you cannot go wrong riding on the cloud of joy. That is my smooth operator story. And it's time for me to go to work. I 
give y'all a look at the old gold wing here. My truck is in the shop, they're gonna. I'm tired of riding these other folks' trucks, but if it's broke, it's broke. I got my gold wing. Stay tuned for more videos like these. Thanks for watching.